In the last couple of weeks, we've written two different palette swapping shaders. One, which I like to call the iterative search palette swapper, works by, in the fragment shader itself, searching for the color of the pixel that you're drawing in the palette, and then if it finds it, it swaps it out for something else. And the other works on the principle of index color, or something very similar to index color, where grayscale value is stored in the sprite itself as an index in the palette, and then in, when you draw the sprite, it uses that index to look up the palette in, in the palette texture, and then that's your color. And today I'm going to talk about a third solution to palette swapping, which I actually don't really know much about. And this is going to be something a little bit different. Today I'm going to talk about Juju's color mod. So as usual, when I talk about an external extension, I'll have a link to the GitHub page down in the description of the video. There's a nice little readme down here. It's actually pretty long, uh, which you can read through if you'd like to know how it works. I have not done that because I'm a lazy sack of potatoes. And what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to run through this with only, a, uh, with only a passing familiarity with how it works in a way that this is basically what I would be doing uh, if I were to download an, an extension for the first time and, and try to use it. Uh, so this is going to be a bit of a learning experience. So let's go to the downloads page. Let's go download color mod 110.yymps or whatever the most recent version is uh, as of you're watching this video. It looks like this is not one of Juju's more busy repositories. Um, this looks some, this looks like something that he made for one or two projects a couple of months ago, and then when he when he was done with it, that was that. Uh, let's go show the download in Explorer. Uh, let's go drag color mod.yymps into the Game Maker project. So uh, when I say I don't know how this works, I did I did take a quick look at um at what this was doing uh, last night, uh, just in case there was anything that I would need to know about like setting up beforehand that might take a while to do on video. And um, let's see, do we have a, we don't have the sample project with it, but if you uh, if you go back to the GitHub repository, there is a sample project in the GitHub repository. And the color mod uh, system is gonna be a bit of an object oriented thing. Uh, and we're going to, uh, by the way, since the last video, I did replace the, uh, the duckling sprite that was the indexed, um, the index version of the sprite in the last video. I did just replace that with the regular full color version. Um, color mod is going to allow you to just work with your full color versions of your sprites. Uh, you're not going to have to pre-process them in any way, uh, but you are going to need to um, to know some information about their palettes. And if I were to say, uh, let's call it palettes uh, equals new color mod. Um, it's going to take a um, uh, it needs a parentheses. It's going to take a couple of arguments into the uh, into the constructor. This is a constructor. Uh, one is going to be an array of target colors, and I believe um, here we have uh, we have some more documentation just in the uh, the JS doc comment up here. Actually, this isn't JS doc. This is just a regular comment. Uh, there's a bit of an uh, uh, an overview of what the functions. Uh, what these functions do. Uh, the first thing I'm going to need to do though, um, I started doing this and then got distracted. The first thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need an array of all of the default colors in the image. And that is one of the things that I was looking at um, last night when I was when I was checking to see if there's anything I was going to need to like set up beforehand. So this is um, this is a list of all of the colors in the uh, in the duck palette. Uh, this is not in like um, like if you were to if you were put a pound sign in front of here and use like CSS colors, uh, the byte order would be reversed. So I'm gonna need to say zero x uh, because I did not think to correct the byte order. Um, you could make these colors with uh, with hex codes like this if you'd like. Uh, you could uh, you could make these colors with something like make color RGB or make color HSV if you'd like. You just need the uh, the colors in the array. Anyway, that's going to be our default palette. And um, going back to the uh, to the example code, I'm going to need to. Um, so this here says uh, we're we're going to want to add a default palette for testing. Um, I don't know if I'm going to need to do that or if I'm just going to want to do that for like debugging purposes or something. Um, I'll I'll do that now. Uh, we'll we'll add a default palette with an empty array of of no color codes, 
Uh, and then if I, um, once I see the system working later on, I will, um, uh, I'll remove it and see if that breaks anything. So, hey. uh, next I'm going to want to add like an actual palette. So in this example, this is apparently like the, the hair and skin and whatever colors of like an NPC or something like that, uh, rather than a duck. And, uh, if I were to use... Uh, of the colors that I extracted from the uh, from the duck palette, like I think this is the green one. Um, so if I were to say palette add green with an array of colors, uh, much like we did in the constructor, uh, let's indent these nicely, prefix them nicely, and then uh, put a comma so that that's a valid array. And I think after this, uh, if I want to, if I don't want any more palettes, uh, which I might do later on, I can I can just uh, let's zoom out a bit. Go into the draw event, and then we can just say like color mod set palette with the name. Um, okay, I think I can get rid of all of this junk. I'll keep the uh, I'll keep the cycling system so that we can like swap between our palettes later on, but uh, I won't I won't do anything with it now. Um, palette dot set palette or what was it? Was it set palette or set shader or I've already forgotten. Set shader. Uh, if I just set it to default, uh, what's that going to do? If I run the game now, is it going to crash? Uh, horribly? Is it going to? It's going to crash horribly. Um, okay, you know what? I'm just going to go with the default uh, the default name. Um, oh, yeah, because variable names. Variable names are hard. Uh, keeping them straight is hard. Okay, so if I just do that, we've got ourselves the regular duck sprite. Um, if I were to, what did I call the other one? Green. So if I were to say, uh, color mod set shader green, uh, how would this work? Okay. Uh, that, that swapped the palette and the, um, the color mod shader itself. Where is that? That's going to be this one. I think, uh, the color mod shader itself is very simple. So it's going to be a little bit more complicated than my index color uh, palette swapping shader because of partially because it's got to do a little bit more math to figure out where the like corresponding colors are and partially because it um like game maker uses a very very old shader language at least at the moment which means that you have to go do some roundabout ways of, of setting things up uh which is a little annoying by the way i i like the name because it's kind of a it's kind of a two-way pun because like mod it's color mod sounds like you know, color modify or something like that uh, in the, the colloquial sense of mod, but it also refers to the uh, the modular division operation that uh, this whole thing kind of um, kind of uses as its basis. And I don't know if I should congratulate Juju on coming up with a good name or if I should yell at him for making such a bad pun. But uh, yeah, let's see. So if I were to uh, if I were to add another palette, so this one can be what's the other one? Blue, uh, which is going to be. Uh, the third, the third row in Game Maker. Anyway, like this, th the third row in that uh, that Duckling Palette sprite. And lastly, we have the uh, the last one, which was demonic black with glowing red eyes, or uh, whatever I called it, uh, which is going to be this one. A lot of zeros in this one, because uh, a lot of the colors are just like straight. Um, straight black no uh no red green or blue in sight let's indent that properly because i i like it that way uh next when we actually uh when we actually draw the sprite uh we can uh switch palette index and then we can say like case zero color mod dot set shader Default, uh, that needs to be a pass case break. Uh, case one, two, and three can be can be the other colors. Um, did I name them? No, I did not. 
All right, green, blue, and black. And this should allow us to, uh, uh, where's the draw at the draw event? This should allow us to just cycle through those different, um, those different color schemes when I hit, when I hit the space bar and indeed it does. Okay. So that's definitely interesting. I, um, I like what I see here. A uh, couple of notes. I I do think the fact that you have to like type out the color codes for all of your palettes is kind of like unnecessarily annoying. You can automate this pretty easily, right? So when I went and extracted all the colors from the uh, the duck palette, I didn't like go over this with the eyedropper tool and pick out all the color codes individually. I just wrote a little bit of GML to copy this to a surface and then like print out the the colors on the surface. Um, you could, you could do this pretty easily. And I would definitely say that like for ease of use, it would probably be a good idea if instead of adding an array of colors or an array of, um, yeah, an array of color codes like this, if you could instead just like pass it in a sprite, which serves as the palette like this. I don't know, uh, which project of his Juju, uh, originally wrote this for because Juju is the sort of person who tends to work on like five games at once sometimes. For all I know, the game that he was working on maybe only had to like swap out five or six colors, and then in that case, just typing out the color code is, is good enough. But I think for general use, especially if we were to anticipate that a lot of people who would use this sort of thing might not be programmers, but might instead be more artistically inclined, it would definitely, um, let's say, reduce a lot of friction if you could just pass in a, a palette texture like this before um, when you set this up. Um, as far as performance goes, I suspect that at runtime, uh, even though the uh, the color mod shader is a little bit more complicated than um, uh, this one, than the index color shader, I suspect that in most cases you probably wouldn't really notice a difference because you're you're still not doing anything really intensive here. You're not doing a lot of like matrix math, or you're not doing a lot of like big loops or a lot of texture samples or anything like that. Uh, you're just doing a couple of arithmetic operations to um, to work out the color modulo value. Um, it does seem that when you uh, when you initialize the system, uh, like when you add a palette, it will go and take a little bit of time to. Uh... I saw something something earlier about when the palette was generated. I forget exactly which function it was in, but it will uh, take a little bit of time to pre-process all the sprites. But I suspect that that might not really take that long because unless you're using a sprite with like hundreds and hundreds of colors, um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dig through this right now. Anyway, I suspect that there might be a a mild hitch at the beginning of your game when you generate all of your palettes, and I would definitely recommend like generating palettes uh, like this um, either when the game starts or, like, during a loading screen when the player enters a new room or something like that so that it doesn't cause a hitch in the middle of gameplay. But I don't know if that would really be a, uh, a noticeable problem unless you're doing something, like, truly, like, insane with the, uh, with the number of colors you're using. And, of course, I, uh, I think I mentioned in the index color video that if you do, like, setting all the sprites in your game to use index color isn't, like, that much of a hassle, but... Um, it can be a little bit of a hassle when you go into the room editor and some and suddenly everything is like black and white instead of the uh, instead of the original color and this uh, this color mod system seems to do away with that problem. So uh, I think that's it for me. Uh, this is a bit of an unusual video for me. Uh, this is not so much a tutorial as a uh, perhaps an exploration, which I thought would be a uh, relevant to the last two videos that I made. Uh, I will have a link to all of the things that I mentioned down in the description of the video, as well as the uh, the previous two palette swapping shaders, shader videos. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. You should all go check out Wizard X and the Lost Hat, which is the game that I like to work on when I'm not doing YouTube stuff. Link to that can be found down in the description of the video. I like to post videos on the weird stuff that you can do in Game Maker, so if you're interested in like 3D stuff or shader stuff or any of that nonsense, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. I hope you all found this interesting, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Spy Die Games, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Holt, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.